So this tab here, the simulation settings tab, has a lot of options. The first one here is environment that determines the gravity and air resistance. Gravity of one is gravity on Earth. Gravity of zero would be nothing falls. It's, it's all simulating, but nothing falls down. Gravity of minus one is things fall up instead of down. And anything in between is, you know, moon's gravity, Mars gravity, really heavy planets and all that. But then uh, slightly further at the bottom here, under duration, you have exactly the thing that we're talking about currently. We're simulating the current frame and it'll do that over a course of 30 frames. But if you take this drop down and turn it down and use either the animated timeline play range or an animated custom play range, then you'll be able to park the animation wherever you wanted it to be. So let me use my timeline play range and this is now going to have a slightly different effect because it depends on how many frames are set in my timeline. It happens to be it's set to 30 frames. So if I go and do nothing else and just change this over to animated play range and simulate again, then you can see that my playhead will go through this simulation and it's now at the end. It's no longer at the beginning. It hasn't set any keyframes, but DeForce has memorized what happens on which frame. So you can now go and take your playhead and bring it back and turn it to wherever you need the simulation to be. So this is a much better intro into what I'm going to show you in a moment. Because the other thing that you might find is, hey, 30 frames might not have been enough to simulate my object. Maybe I needed 60, maybe I need 90, maybe I have a long animation that might be wind blowing and the wind blows for five seconds. 30 frames isn't going to be enough for that. So what we can do is we can turn my play range here to something much larger. So let's turn this to maybe like 91 frames. This is more than 30, three times more in fact. And it now means that since my default simulation settings are still set to use the play range here, it will now go and simulate 90 frames. We're not going to see that big a difference, but we certainly do see something is happening beyond frame 30. It's coming to a rest now, so it's not really a great example. Uh, so 60 frames is probably enough for most still frame users, but if you're talking about animation, then you probably need to have a much larger way. And we'll look into that as well when we look at the wind node, which is very, very exciting. It's kind of cool if you wanted to animate a waving flag. And I think that was the case on the season pass two with the pirates. Travis's team has made an animated banner at the top where the pirate flag with the DAS logo is waving in the wind, and that was done with DeForce. We'll talk about gravity in a moment, but just for now, what the one thing is that you, if you find yourself, hey, at frame 20 was the ideal simulation that I want to keep. I want to make sure I don't lose it, and maybe I need my play range for something else, and I have three other objects that need to be DeForce, and what do I do? You can go and export the shape of this object and turn it into a morph, and that'll be really useful. Some of you may know how to do this already, but if you don't, let me quickly explain it to you. You need to export this frame and only this object at that frame, at this resolution and nothing else, uh, just out to something like a temporary folder. Make sure you disable or just make invisible all other objects that might be in your scene. So my ground and my sphere, I don't want to export that. It's just the cloth. And I'll head over to File, Export, and I'll just put this on my desktop, maybe in a new folder that I will call Deforce Stream. How's that? Deforce Stream. I'll just call it Cloth Drape. That's cool. I'll export that just with the Das Studio preset here and hit accept. I can go back to the beginning. In fact, I can go to my simulation properties and literally clear this whole simulation because I don't really need it anymore. I can go and make my ground and my sphere visible again if I wish. But the most important thing is I can now bring this as a morph into my object. And the way to do that is under Edit, Object, Morph Loader Pro. And then you go and pick the file that you've just saved out. This was my default stream here. Cloth Drape. There we go. It kind of depends if you have reverse deformations or not. Let's just say we have them and hit accept. And it should say created morphs successfully. So under morphs, I find my cloth drape now and it will now act as the simulation did just with a slider. So that will now be saved with your scene. You can also save this out as a figure or prop asset and it will have that exact morph in it. It'll also have a reverse morph because <laughs> that's just the settings on the slider. This is what happens when we go the negative way. So kind of cool what you can do there. But you can also change that on the little gear icon under parameter settings. You can rename it. You can put it somewhere else. You can take the minimum out if you want. 
And uh, now we have something like this. So this is a way to make sure when you simulate other objects, if you want to save something as a morph, save the simulation out, that you want to use in other scenes or present to your customers, this is how you can do it.